I've been printing like a crazy person the past few weeks, so this week I'm going to create multiple miniature collages in record time. Welcome to the studio, it's Froyal here. I'm so glad you've joined me. Today we're creating beautiful miniature collages. Fast and furious, baby! <laughs> I'm going to give you my three top tips or three hacks for making collage fast. So my first hack is to start big. The bigger the better. What's the biggest piece of watercolour paper that you've got? Actually, it doesn't have to be watercolour paper, but I used watercolour paper. This one is 51 centimetres by 41 centimetres or 16 by 20 because that's the biggest one that I had in my studio. So I pulled out all of the beautiful prints. I created these in the past few weeks using my beautiful dance moves, masks and stencils. They're just gorgeous. I love them. Glued them onto the fabulous watercolour paper. Yay, so easy. And let me ask you, why would you create one when you can create three? <laughs> I had so many prints, I couldn't decide which ones I didn't want, so I used them all. Yay. <laughs> Easy peasy, look how good the prints look. Now when they're completely dry, and yes, you do need to wait for them to dry, we're going to move on to our second hack, <laughs> or top tip, and now we're going to cut small. Start big, cut small, we're on a roll. So I measured out half of the paper, drew a line and then cut it into four in the top section and the bottom section. So I'm looking at eight different pieces. That's pretty cool. Like how easy is this? Cut along the lines <laughs> and then when you flip it over, voila, you see what you get. It's actually a lot of fun because you don't know what's going to be in that little miniature piece until you flip it over and you see. And that's going to be our starting point. That's our little substrate or canvas that we're going to be using to create our fabulous collages. I know, it's so much fun. Look how many I ended up with. Yes, I do get carried away with an idea. I just loved it. Of course, some of them turn out better than others, but now I have a whole pile to start with and that's a great place to start. So first of all, we need to separate them into two groups. Which one needs just a little bit of focal point and which one needs a whole lot of help? <laughs> so I'm separating them out, putting them into different groups according to what I think they're going to need next. Right, so of course we need some focal points for our fabulous little miniature collage substrates. And I pulled out my dance moves, stenciled prints, which I do have a whole heap of them rip them up, put them in a pile to get them ready to glue onto the collage. Look at all the fabulous colours and textures. Yes, I do print in rather a frenzy when I get printing, but it's really good when you're making collage to have a whole heap to choose from. Now I'm going to start with the easiest piece, the one that just require a simple focal point <laughs> from something I've already printed or created. I know, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We're talking five minutes, baby, five minutes. <laughs> Glue the fabulous focal point onto the collage substrate and it's already done. Oh, don't forget your scrap bag. Yes, I've got my scrap bag next to me. Love scrap bags. Scrap bags are so good for that little piece, that cherry on top. Just something to add to the collage to finish it. Mwah! Beautiful. Now that I've done some with my bigger stencil dance moves prints, I really wanted some small ones. I really wanted to make smaller stencils, but alas, it didn't happen. So, <laughs> I'm not one to be put off easy. I decided to create a digital print page of my fabulous little dance moves. I printed it out as a color laser copy, put it on my gel plate as an image transfer. I know, it was an experiment. I just wanted to see what they would look like. I was creating them like as if I could get stencils made. So they were already lined up. They looked fabulous. I just loved them. The image transfer turned out so well. And then I put the paint layers on. I love this technique where you spray it with water and you create that different kind of mottly speckled effect. I love it. It's absolutely fabulous. So I put my multiple layers of paint on. Just remember if you're doing this, you do have to wait for each layer to dry. Then I pulled the print and voila! <laughs> 
It looked fabulous. It looked so good. I was a little excited. So then I thought, well, why can't I do that some more? Of course I can. <laughs> so I made a whole pack. <laughs> I made a whole pack of 12 of mini dance moves, the little steps, <laughs> little steps. <laughs> I should call them little steps. Oh, I'm going to do that. Then now on my website as a digital collage paper pack. Yes, you can download them. Instant baby. There's no shipping. There's no, <laughs> there's no customs problems. You can download them as a digital collage paper image straight off my website. There's 12 pages in the pack because I wanted a different variety. There's some that have got colors. There's the really, really small ones. There's a little tiny bit bigger. And then there's a few of them together. I know, I know, I never only do one thing. Some of them have got some fabulous colors and textures. This one here is an actual photo of the original print that I just pulled. So that one's pretty cool. And then there's a few others that are some textured jelly prints that I've overlaid the dance move on. They look really good, loving it. And as I was printing them out, I thought to myself, why can't I print them onto more textured paper? There's no reason. <laughs> so I pulled out my Kozo paper. Oh, I love this pack. This is the Earth Colors pack of the Kozo paper, the Mulberry paper pack. They're just beautiful. Now, the first one I tried, I taped one line at the bottom on a carrier sheet. So a piece of cardstock, use it because the mulberry paper is very thin. And if you try to print that through your printer, it will jam immediately. So you've got to put it on a carrier sheet, tape it to the bottom. And I ran it through, it turned out, ta-da! It just turned out amazing. I got a little bit excited. And I did it the second time and it might have caught in the printer. So I'm going to tell you the best way to do it. Put the tape i'm using blue low tack tape so it's not a strong sticky tape it's a very lightweight tape and tape it all the way around the edge of the paper so that when you feed it through the printer it doesn't jam i have jammed printers before not today but other days i've managed to do that and it's not fun and it takes ages to get the paper out so don't do it the lazy way and put one strip. Do it the proper way and tape all the way around the edge of the paper. Then when you run it through your printer, it comes out without jamming and it looks amazing. So I did quite a few. Now you can patiently peel the tape off the paper to release your beautiful textured, amazing mulberry paper with the dance moves, <laughs> shapes on it, or you can just cut it. I peeled patiently the first one and then the next five that I printed, I just cut them because it was quicker and easier. But look how good they printed. I am loving this idea. It's so exciting because it's instant. We like instant and it's very affordable. Hello, no shipping. So this is the original one. Yes, I've already started to use it because I love it. But then, hello, if you look at this, this is one of the printed ones. Look how amazing it looks on the Kozo paper. I know. This is an original one that I did an image transfer straight onto a gel print. That looks pretty cool. I'm loving it. But then the ones that are printed, they look amazing too. See, you can see the glorious fibers of the mulberry paper. Just make sure you put it on a piece of cardstock and tape it just saying, don't go leaving comments that your printer jammed because I've told you three times now. <laughs> tape it onto a carrier sheet. It looks amazing, it printed so well. So in the Kozo pack, which is this one, earth colored one, you get these colors, but you also get like a couple of white ones and a couple of really pale ones. Of course, I printed all the colored ones first because they were pretty which was this one here, that printed up beautiful, love it. And then I printed the smaller size, that works really well. But then I decided to print some of the colored ones because I made quite a few different colors in the pack because I was having so much fun. So this is one of the colored ones of the digital paper printed onto the Kozo paper. Look at it, beautiful, fabulous, fibrous paper but printed with the, this is just my inkjet printer. It's not even a laser printer. It's not a fancy printer. It's just an inkjet. 
and it's turned out really well. I know I'm excited. That one's turned out well. I showed you that one already. This one is just a print with copy paper. Boring old copy paper straight off the printer. I think that would look even better with a laser printer, but I actually don't have one. <laughs> so you've got to go with what you got, right? This one, another piece of Kozo paper. So I used the coloured Kozo paper to print the black and white ones because there's two pages that are straight black and white, so you can print them onto anything you want. And then I used the white Kozo paper to print the coloured ones. And they turned out amazing. They just I'm just so happy with this. I've created my own language. Look at it. It looks like a language, right? And it's a dance move. <laughs> so I started putting collages together and I started using them and they look really, really good. So number three in my hacks for creating fast collage easy is to surround yourself with an endless amount of possibilities. So on my table here, I've got some that I already created from the beautiful substrates and they're such a great place to start. But then you've got to add other bits to it. So I have my huge pile here of my dance moves stencils all ripped up into pieces which are fabulous. Now I have my endless supplies of tiny little ones on these papers. They're working amazing. And also I've got some acrylic skins. These are acrylic skins. We were making them in class four of my textures class, which is now on Skillshare and also on Patreon. <laughs> Celebrate your creative self. What they are is paint and texture mediums created into simple templates that you can then use for focal points in your collage. I love making them, so much fun. I think I probably like the glass beads best, although I also made some with gold mica flakes. They're pretty cool. Anyway, have a look at my class as a side note because it's a huge class, it's on texture. I love texture. <laughs> It's massive, it's fabulous, so come and join me on Skillshare or Patreon. Anyway, so I've got some acrylic skins also, and of course there's the scrap bag, hello, with the beautiful pieces of Kozo paper and some extra prints. So number three was surround yourself with a huge amount of possibilities because you want to create collage without thinking. Really, it's overrated to think so much. You want to put them together intuitively. Trust yourself. You've got this. You can make this happen. Put a heap of your materials around you that you can just grab and use and put together your beautiful collages and you'll be amazed at what you can create in a really short time. Now, what can we do with these beautiful collages? Well, you could frame them as a miniature collage in themselves. I'm thinking they're looking pretty beautiful. I could do that. Or they could become part of a bigger piece. That's really cool too. And it can be a little bit bigger or a lot bigger because this can become a focal point of a much bigger artwork. I know, it's endless. We could put a couple of them together. You could frame a couple of them together or hang a couple of them together. That'd look pretty cool too. It's really quite endless what you can do. I'm probably going to keep making a few more because it's really fun and my table's now so full of stuff that I may as well, <laughs> right? It's much easier to create when you're on a roll and you've already got all your things out so you may as well make a whole heap because then another day when you just need a little something to finish an artwork or you want to send a gift so this is the size of a large envelope in New Zealand and I can send this size anywhere in the world for five dollars I know it's fabulous in fact this is what we send every month <laughs> on patreon they get a lovely pack full of beautiful collage papers every month they're starting to get some dance moves next month because <laughs> I've got so many prints. So look at that. It fits perfect in one of these large envelopes. I could send a gift to anybody, which is really quite possible. And I can just put it in this envelope, wrap it up nice, or actually get mum to wrap it up nice, put it in the envelope and then send it anywhere in the world for $5. Isn't that fabulous? So the benefit in making the beautiful small collages is You've got something to use for the future. You can add them as elements to larger artworks or you can give them as gifts or you can hang them in a cluster on the wall. Oh man, it's endless. I love making small ones. Right, well, I'm thinking this one's finished. 
See, it's got the fabulous gold mica flake, acrylic skin, one of the little dance moves, a nice strip of them there, that worked really well, and a bigger one there, a bit of Kozo paper. Happy with that. It's all dried up and finished. It's looking fabulous. I could put a mat around it and frame it. I think that that would be really cool. This one's finished, but I might give it a bit of a satin varnish because it's a little dull with the matte medium. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. This one I love. This one's really cool too. That looks fabulous. A little bit of Kozo paper, the small little dance moves, and one of the bigger ones. Yes, that's working. It really doesn't matter if the shapes go up this way or this way, or you print them back to front or another way around. It really is okay. That's looking pretty good. I'm liking that. I think I'm just going to leave that one. Now, this one's got the glass beads on it. You can tell that the glass beads are almost dry because they will go completely clear. See how pretty it looks? Love it. Love it. <laughs> You gotta come and do my class. We have so much fun. <laughs> and you learn really cool stuff. So I think it needs a little something in there. And this one, I like this one. I put some of the Kozo paper on that I had printed with because it's got the color on it. That's how I know I'd printed with it. Makes fabulous prints using the Kozo paper. Love it. But it needs a little something. So I'm thinking that I might put one of, some of this on. I'm thinking, yeah, let's do that. We'll just tear it down this way. This is on the printed on the Kozo paper. Man, it printed well. And then I'm just going to put it on here, just a little bit on the side because I just think I want an extra something on there. That'll work, that'll look beautiful. That needs a little trinket. <laughs> Which I've been collecting since I did class two on found objects. So I'm going to put probably that, like that, on there. And I'm going to give it a satin varnish because it needs a little bit of shine. That's what I'm thinking. So let's maybe just do one more. I'll fix all those. That's what's going to happen with those ones. Why don't we do something with a different colour? I've got so many. <laughs> I know. Oh, what about let's do one of these? They look fun, 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 fun. I love it. We really don't need to add too much to it. It's a really cool little piece. I'm liking it up that way. I'm thinking perhaps a little bit of the red Kozo paper, beautiful texture on there like that. And then maybe a strip of this, perhaps. This one is my original image transfer. Worked out so well. What about we just put a strip of this on here, like that, going down like there. And then we need hmm, something in here. Ooh, what about some of these? No, too much, too much. We've already got the beautiful little shapes. How about one of my beehive papers? That'll look beautiful. Yes, loving this idea. That's going to look glorious. So we could put this on like that. That's looking good. And they it dissolves quite well. And then we just might need... Oh, maybe we want one of my skins. <laughs> what about the purple one? Yes. Oh, yes. I love layers. I love layers. We could put that there, that there, that there. Do we, we need a little something for the middle? I'm thinking that we do. We could even use one of these little ones that are sitting on the side. That would work. See, that would work. I mean, it's not bad. It's not a bad option. It's option number one. Or we could use some of my power shell. That would look really cool too. I'm liking option number two. Oh yeah, baby. Look at those colors. Then we've just got to decide. That one looks good. So what do you think? Option number one or option number two? Or option number three? <laughs> so much fun. Okay, there's option number three. No, it's a bit dull, isn't it? Yeah, 
That's a bit dull. Can't have dull. All right, I'm liking the power. I think I'm going with the power shell. Oh, that one's nice too. <gasps> yeah, that one's nice. It matches better. Okay, that's it. Stop looking. Stop looking. <laughs> I'm going to glue all those down. They're going to look amazing. And I'll show you when they're dry. And I might make a few more. Hmm. We'll see. They're so quick. They're so much fun. So make sure you start big, you cut small, and then surround yourself with so many endless possibilities that you can create intuitively without thinking or getting stressed out. And in a very short time, you'll have a whole heap of beautiful little collages that you can make as framed works or add them to larger works or send them as gifts. So many possibilities and so much fun. Thanks for joining me today. I had so much fun. I know I got a little excited with my new digital collage papers because it was such a brilliant idea. And I've created my own language. I'm really so you can find them on my website, broilart.com. You'll also find there where to get the stencils and the masks of my Dance Moves series. Bye. And if you need any more information, there's always in the description under the video. I'll leave you with this one because just in case you missed me making my fabulous prints with these masks, it's a fun video. I had a great time. So I'll see you next time in the studio. Yay.